Hey everybody, I'm here with Anthony, who is the CEO of eNavi. Uh, he's got a great template today going through some e-commerce data and how to diagnose kind of what you need to focus on to get the most results and improvement. So Anthony, uh, do, if you want to do a quick intro, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm Anthony Morgan, the founder and CEO of eNavi. We are a Shopify CRO uh, agency. We do what we call customer first CRO, ultimately solving data-backed problems. How we find these data-backed problems is with this report that I'm gonna show you today. Uh, and we solve those problems through customer research. Awesome, yeah, let's, uh, let's pull up the template. We're gonna do a walkthrough of the Looker Studio report and show you guys kind of how to use it, what to look for, and really everything you need to know on how to use this. Cool, so this is the, this is the report. Ultimately, when you come in here, you're gonna select your GA4 property. You're gonna select your date range. Um, and so like, a, if you are wanting to see more like average trends, then select a date range that's not Q4 and Black Friday. Um, and so in this case, we've got the, the Google Merch Shop, so I'm not sharing any clients data. And then we've got uh, the last 30 days. And then step two here is where, where we look at what we call the uh, metric on fire. And so it's the intracite funnel. So the e-commerce funnel broken up into four steps. The first step being landing to product view. The user could land anywhere on the site. What percentage of those users are getting to are viewing a product. The second step here, product view to add to cart. The percentage of users that get to a product page, how many of those are adding to cart? And then add to cart to begin checkout. How many of those are that add to cart are beginning checkout? And then the last one, begin checkout to purchase. And each of these uh, are benchmarked against our target ranges that you can see down here. These target ranges are based off of a bunch of other Shopify stores. Um, and so it's not industry specific or anything like that, but these are kind of the, the ranges that we, we uh, like to target. Like what, what we typically see a store that's performing well, this is where they're at in terms of the, the baseline targets. And so when you see this landing to product view is 41.29%. That's 17.4% below the baseline target of 50% for landing to product view. And so when we're looking at this example, the metric on fire here would be landing to product view, right? And so that's well under indexed. The next thing we can do after step two is we can dive further into looking at underperforming segments. And so if we wanted to look at landing to product view, we can look at device category, we can look by uh, session default channel grouping, we can look at landing page category, like we can see here, only 19% of the users that land on the home page are getting to a product page. That's well below the 50% target. Same thing with collection pages, only 44%. What you should be seeing, uh, which it's strange that this is pulling up null, if you, show, if you have null, there's an error or there's not enough data. If you have a really small store, you might not have a large enough sample size to fill up some of these values. If your targeting's off, sometimes you'll see like something that's like over 100% and you or your tracking's off. You've got some kind of tracking issue there that you're going to need to get fixed to really trust this report. Um, but in the case of landing page, when you're looking at landing to product view, your product's LP should be either null or 95% plus because the user's landing on a product page. So that should be registering the product view event. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the breakdown there is you can look at segments and you can see, okay, we've got a, we've got a real problem here. 19% of users that land on the homepage, only 19% only of those users that land on the homepage are getting to a product view. That's an area that we can look into uh, ultimately improving, right? And so that could be navigation. There's issues with the navigation that's confusing the users or the users maybe are landing on the home page, getting to a collection page, but not getting to a product page. Um, and so maybe there's issues with the navigate the, the collection pages, they're too cluttered. Um, and so you're gonna need to dive further into the why, but this will give you the where, where to look for your particular issues. Um, and so that's ultimately the, the report you get here. Um, and so, yeah, I think that, that covers everything, John. Yeah, and can you scroll back up to the, uh that metric on fire section. I yeah. love that concept too of, there's so many different metrics we could be looking at. 
it's really hard a lot of times to know like where, what are the ones that matter and then what are we actually going to do about it if it's below or above where we expect it to be. Right. Um, can you tell me a little bit about for these four metrics, what would be like some of the actions you would take for each one if uh, you found it was below kind of that that benchmark range? Yeah, I mean, so anytime our, our third step is always diving further into those underperforming segments, that just gives us more context because otherwise we can know, okay, landing the product views an issue, but when we can actually drill down on, you know, mobile, only 34% direct, 39% paid, 22%. So those are particular issues. When we can combine some of these segments together, it can give us more context. Like we could learn that mobile to paid is an issue, right? And so when we get more of that context, that that helps us put ourselves in the in the shoes of the user, right? So we can look at, okay, this is the ad that they're seeing on, on paid social. Here's what they see when they land on the site. Is there cohesiveness between that? Are we orienting the user? Are they understanding where am I at? What can I do here? Why should I do that here in those first seven seconds? Um, and so that's that's really what we, we like to do is with that next step, get more context. And then and then after having more context, do what we call like a heuristic analysis and get a feel for putting yourself in that user's shoes. What are those issues that they're encountering and, and stuff like that. But if we had like, you know, let's say for, for instance, we had like a lot of context on, you know, mobile users are landing on the PDP, but they're not adding to cart. Um, you know, some of the fixes there can, can be the, the, there's not enough motivation for the user. Like maybe they're not scrolling down, right? Oftentimes we like to pull in different data points. So like heat map and click map behavior to understand how the users are interacting to just get more context. Um, and so there's a variety of ways that you can solve these problems, but it really depends on what you gather in further research. This is really just the stepping point, the stepping stone of like focusing and prioritizing your conversion rate efforts. Um, and it's a, it's a far better way to measure your online store performance than just conversion rate. Conversion rate's a vanity metric. Like it changes so much based off of outside variables that you can't control fully, right? You could get a, a bunch of uh, referral traffic or uh, organic traffic, traffic that doesn't convert from something that went viral. Uh, and that could really mess up your conversion rate. And you look at like global conversion rate, it just doesn't tell you a lot. Whereas this is a very actionable way to, to measure your online store performance. Yeah, and I think that's a big mistake I see quite a bit. To your point of like breaking down some of these metrics a little bit further by these segments. So like in this example, like looking at paid, like it's clear if this was real data, paid is underperforming on all four of them where organic is actually above. So maybe it's not a global issue with the page itself. Maybe it's specifically, like you said, the messaging or that, that specific ad campaign, where otherwise you might just focus overall. And the way we have this broken down with desktop, channel, page, you can really dig into where the issue might be to kind of like focus your efforts on uh, what actually needs to improve. Yep. Oh yeah, definitely. And organic can be a a great way just to look at like, what is your high intent audience? How do they perform throughout the funnel? Uh, it's, it's a really good way to, to kind of measure that. Um, but yeah, in this instance, paid is significantly underperforming across the board. And so there's probably a mix of issues there. And one of the things that's probably affecting it is just the quality of the audience too. And there's probably a lack of cohesiveness between the ads and, um, and where you know where they're landing on the site and so a lot of different things that would need to be done here to really in, improve how that channel is performing but now you know paid's an issue uh, how can we address that now with those uh four metrics um if you scroll up there is there one out of those four that you see more commonly as an issue issue that e-commerce brands underperform on yeah that's a that's a really good question uh, I think the, the data that we had last year in all of the discovery audits we did um, and the brands that we worked with was 72% of stores struggled with what we called product discovery, so landing to product view. Uh, that one we see most commonly. 
Um, and like we're predominantly working with Shopify stores. And so like the begin checkout to purchase, most stores perform fine there. The checkout's pretty good with Shopify. If they aren't performing well there, it's because of hidden fees or they've got a lot of international users that there's these additional shipping costs that they didn't expect. There's a lot of things from a pricing, like a fee standpoint that, that can affect there. But um, for the vast majority of brands, it's those first two metrics, landing to product view, which is like 72%, and then product view to add to cart um, is another good percentage of, uh, of stores too. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, awesome. I think um, it's going to be great when people start using the templates, and I think it's really going to help. It's always like the efficiency and just having that repeatable process to go through when you're trying to do this analysis and not starting from scratch every time. To have like a template like this where you could just put in your data, immediately see the metrics, and then, then figure out, okay, what do we actually do? Um, it's always a big help. So excited about this one. Now, Anthony, where can uh, people find you? I think I saw you were pretty active on LinkedIn. Um, what's the base, best place for people to follow along? Yeah, best place would be LinkedIn. Um, I think LinkedIn Anthony C. Morgan is my LinkedIn URL. But if you just search Anthony Morgan, you'll find me. Um, or you can search Enabby on LinkedIn. But I'm very active there. And then Sheldon, our head of growth, is also super active there. And so if you're eager to learn about CRO, especially when it pertains to e-commerce stores, um, we post a lot of content. We love to educate. We love to share. That's why this template's free. And this is something that we use internally um, with all of our clients. Um, it's been a real game-changing process um, for the, the way that we're able to approach CRO and maximize our CRO efforts. Great. Yeah, no, I'm excited for this to go out. We're going to be sending this out pretty soon uh, after you guys are seeing this video. So be on the lookout for that. And then, um, yeah, definitely check Anthony out on LinkedIn. And we'll talk to everybody soon.